Good afternoon, uh, dear friends um, of this channel and those who love Jesus Christ and His Holy Church. Today uh, we are praying Psalm 28 uh, from the Orthodox Study Bible, the English edition. And um, this is uh, Psalm 28, a Psalm of, by David, the final day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name that we might uh, learn His word and be obedient to Him and we pray for God to forgive us our sins and all the wrong uh, doings and all the wrong words we have spoken during our lifetime for God to forgive us every wrong word that we have said or every unfaithful thought that we have taught. We pray Jesus to forgive us and to clean us and to make us holy temple of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 28. Bring to the Lord, O you sons of God, bring to the Lord the sons of Rams, bring to the Lord glory and honor, bring to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in his holy court. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundered. The Lord is upon the many waters. The voice of the Lord is strong. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord shatters cedars. And the Lord shall grind the power, grind uh, to powder the cedars of Lebanon. And he shall grind them find like the young bull and like Lebanon, but his beloved shall be like a son of unicorns. The voice of the Lord cuts through fiery flames. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert, and the Lord will shake the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes deer to calf and uncovers the tickets. And in his temple, everyone speaks of his glory. The Lord shall dwell in the deluge, and the Lord shall sit as king forever. There, the Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Now we're going to read the commentary to Psalm 28. In the Orthodox Study Bible, Psalm 28 is a prophecy concerning the baptism of Jesus Christ in the Jordan River, celebrated in the salvation. Oh, sorry, in the services of the Theophany or the Epiphany. Both words Epiphany and Theophany mean manifestation or revelation. And Theophany has the additional meaning, revelation of God, the God who is revealed in Christ's baptism is God the Trinity, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Thus, this event also reveals that Jesus Christ, the Son, is one of the Trinity. Psalm 28 reveals the Father as the voice speaking from heaven. At Jesus baptism like in verses 3 to 5 the voice of the Lord is upon the waters the God of glory thundered the Lord is upon the many waters the voice of the Lord is strong the voice of the Lord is full of majesty the voice of the Lord shatters cedars and the Lord shall grind the pow to powder the cedars of Lebanon Also, in verses 7 to 9, the voice of the Lord cuts through fiery flames. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert, and the Lord will shake the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes deer to calf and uncovers the tickets, and in his temple everyone speaks of his glory. See also 
Matthew chapter 3 verse 17 which says and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased in the commentary to this verse the Orthodox study Bible says this quotation is from Psalm 2 verse 7 you are my son today I have begotten you note how the baptism of Jesus reveals the great mystery of the Trinity the Father speaks the Holy Spirit descends and the incarnate son is baptized also the commentary to Psalm 28 says uh, in it refers to Mark chapter 1 verse 11 where it says then a voice came from heaven you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and also the same thing in uh, Luke chapter 3 verse 22 and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him and a voice came from heaven which said you are my beloved son in you I am well pleased in the commentary to Luke chapter 3 verse 22 in the Orthodox study Bible it says Jesus himself doesn't need baptism in being baptized our Lord accomplished several things God's uh, beloved son as I first was he affirmed John's ministry second he was revealed by the Father and the Holy Spirit to be the Christ uh, God's beloved son third he identified with his people by descending into the waters with them fourth he prefigured his own death giving baptism its ultimate meaning fifth he entered the waters sanctifying the water itself sixth he fulfilled the many types given in the Old Testament at as when Moses led the people from bondage through the Red Sea, like in Exodus 14, and when the Ark of the Covenant was carried into the Jordan so that the people could enter the Promised Land, uh, and seven, he opened, like, sorry, like in Joshua 3 and 4, and seven, he opened heaven, to a world separated from God through sin. Further in the commentary to Luke chapter 3 verse 22, the commentary says specifically to this verse that the baptism of Christ is celebrated on January the 6th uh, and is known commonly as Epiphany or more properly Theophany which means God revealed. The Son is revealed by the descent of the Holy Spirit and by the voice of the Father. This is the greatest and clearest public manifestation of God as Trinity in human history. As we sing, the Trinity was made manifest. The words spoken by the Father also apply to everyone who is baptized and lives faithfully. A sonship is bestowed by adoption, as it says in Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. The Holy Spirit appearing as a dove is not an incarnation, but rather a visible sign for the people. This appearance further fulfills the type prefigured at the flood, just as a dove announced to Noah that God's wrath had ceased. So too the Holy Spirit announces here that Christ has reconciled us to God by sweeping sin away in the flood waters of baptism. Returning to the commentary uh, to Psalm 28, it says, It also reveals the Son, His beloved, like in verse 6, and the Holy Trinity, 
like fiery, fiery, sorry, fiery flames in verse 7. Um, see also the canticles 4 and 5 of Compline in the Four Feasts of Theophany. Unicorns, uh, unicorns like in verse 6 are often symbols of purity. Verse 3 is used as the procaimenon of the following places in the services to, of Theophany before the before the Isaiah readings in the first, third, and sixth hour royal hours, before the gospel reading in the great blessing of the waters, after Psalm 37, and within the first canon of Canticle 4 in Autros, and before the gospel reading in the Divine Liturgy. In addition, to these verses 1 to 11 are read as one of the psalms in the third royal hour. Thank you God for talking to us through this commentary and through reading Psalm 28 today. We pray to bless our day, to open our eyes to see you and to give us humility to follow your teaching and to read your day, uh, your gospel daily, to be able to proclaim who is Jesus and to be witnesses. Give us a humble spirit, good heart, and just make us good people. Just as you are a good person, make us good persons. Amen. In Jesus' name.